Hello, my name is James Rubin. I do a lot of acoustic guitar setups in my shop. To save time and improve accuracy, I have developed a tool that will quickly and precisely lower the height of an existing saddle, make a copy, or create a new taller saddle. When making or adjusting saddles by hand, one must be very careful to maintain a consistent radius to match the fretboard of the instrument, while carefully adjusting the height of the saddle. Removing too much material requires making a new saddle, so it is common to proceed conservatively, frequently restringing the instrument to check one's progress. Often the saddle is lowered by removing material from the bottom. In many cases this works well, but frequently the bottom of the saddle slot is not perfectly flat and a saddle may require a little fine tuning to achieve a consistent pressure along its entire length. This can be very noticeable when working with under the saddle transducer pickups. For this reason, I prefer to ensure that I have a properly fitted saddle while I still have material to work with and then make any final adjustments from the top. Additionally, it is not uncommon to find that the radius of the saddle is not ideal for the instrument either due to manufacturing or replacement with an inappropriate saddle. My saddle adjustment tool makes adjustments to the top of the saddle in conjunction with a common disc sander. It maintains a consistent radius through the use of radius templates riding against a fence and the height of the saddle is adjusted using two threaded rods that push the saddle into the sanding surface. The rods touch the saddle approximately where the first and sixth strings make contact and thus correspond to the height of each of those strings. The amount each rod has moved is shown on each of the dial indicators. The goal is to adjust the height of the first and sixth strings to the desired height and the curve of the radius will determine the height of the other strings. The tool rides along a fence attached to a common disc sander. The fence is one quarter inch wide and should be set one quarter inch from the face of the sanding disc. This is easily accomplished by using one of the templates, which is a quarter inch thick, as a spacer when clamping the fence to the table. It is imperative that any neck adjustments have been done prior to working on the saddle. Also, when measuring the action, I always fret the string at the first fret to take the nut out of the equation. The height of the nut can vary significantly from instrument to instrument and will make it difficult to make direct comparisons. I use a string action gauge to measure the action at the 12th fret in thousandths of an inch. I record the distance from the bottom of the string to the top of the fret on both the first and sixth strings. Because the 12th fret is approximately half the distance from the nut to the saddle, any change in the action at the 12th fret will require removing twice that amount from the saddle. To use the tool, first install the radius template that matches the radius of the instrument's fretboard. The next step is to adjust the tool to the current height of the saddle. This is done with the sander off by inserting the saddle loosely in the clamp and adjusting the rods until the top of the saddle just touches the sanding disc. Note which way the saddle is installed in the tool. The saddle must be reinstalled in the same orientation. The clamp is then tightened securely and the tool is moved across the fence with the sander running. The goal is to remove the smallest amount of material possible across the top of the saddle to ensure that it has the proper radius. If it doesn't touch all the way across, the rods can be adjusted and the saddle sanded again until the radius is correct. At this point, the dial indicator faces should be adjusted to zero and the tool is calibrated to your saddle. The saddle is then reinstalled in the instrument and measurements taken at the 12th fret on the first and sixth strings. The amount the action is to be lowered at the 12th fret is multiplied by two and this is the amount the rods need to be moved on the corresponding sides to effect the desired change. With the saddle again clamped loosely in the tool in the same orientation, advance the rods forward the corresponding amount on each side. Run the saddle through the sanding process again and the final height is achieved. The saddle then needs to have the top contoured and any desired compensation touched up or added. I often want to make a copy of an existing saddle. A customer may be happy with the setup but want to try another saddle material. This is easily done by adjusting the tool so the original saddle just touches the face of the sander while off and then replacing it with a properly fitted saddle blank and sanding to the original dimensions. There are times when I need to replicate a saddle but want it to be a little taller. Either the action is too low or the saddle has been shimmed to bring the action up and a new non-shim saddle is in order. This is easily accomplished by adjusting the tool so the original saddle just touches the sanding disc with the sander off and then moving the rods away from the sander the desired amount. The amount to raise the action can be calculated or shims can be installed to get the correct action and the shims measured with calipers to determine how far to move the rods. A properly fitted blank can then be installed and sanded to shape. Thanks for watching. For more information on the saddle adjustment tool, please see the link in the description below.